before I get to my lesson, let me speak about something that is not a big deal. There are some people who say or who may want to get close to me. And if you are trying to do that, let me make it really easy for you. If you want to get close to me, be straightforward and be honest about yourself and when you are speaking to me. If you want to know information about me, you have to be willing to speak about yourself as well. Don't be afraid to tell me your faults and stuff like that. The more open you are with me, the more open I am going to be with you. It is not going to be this one-sided thing where I am open with you and you are not open with me. And if there is something, I believe this. I believe that you can be straightforward with a person as long as you are being respectful to that person that you are speaking to. You can tell me what you will as long as you say it in a very respectful way. Hey Kevin, I believe that when you was reading blah blah blah, you were wrong. You know, I'm not trying to make you mad or anything, blah, blah, blah. Hey, that is fine. But don't do it in this underhanded, beating around the bush type of way. You see, and what I tend to find as well, If you don't come straight out with it, misunderstandings are going to happen. Of course, misunderstandings are going to happen when you involve yourself with another person, but misunderstandings are going to happen if you speak in a beating around the bush type of way not being straightforward with it. Be open and honest. That is one simple way on how to get close to me. Because like I said, I don't care if you are poor, I don't care if you're rich, I don't care if you eat pumpkin seeds, pumpkin seeds every day. You can eat sunflower seeds every day, I don't mind. As long as you are being straightforward, respectful, and everything like that, hey, I am willing to want to spend time with you and talk with you and stuff like that. I am not this picky person that, hey, you know, you have to be pretty, you have to have so much money, you have to drive this type of car. No, I am not like that. <clears throat> I am not like that. Because, and this is what I tell people, if you are the type to beat around the bush, it is not going to work. So many misunderstandings are going to happen. Hey, tell me if I am doing something wrong or if I am doing something that you don't like, and I will tell you the same, and things are going to work out. If we are both willing to work at it at that point. And this goes for men and female. So be straightforward. Okay, let's go to James chapter one verses six through seven to the left is the king james version to the right is the expanded bible 
Give me a second, please. Let me say this too. I was talking to this person about faith and this is what I don't like either. It is one thing to not have faith or have very low faith, but don't try to get another person to lower your faith down to yours. I don't like that. If you have low faith, don't go around and tell people what is possible and what is not possible. That is so wrong. If you want to have low faith, hey, so be it. That is you. Don't go around telling people what is possible in God and what is not possible in God. You have to be very careful of the people that you go around. And in some cases, you can't help with being around certain people. So anyways, I was with this other person and this person was telling me in so many words, just trying to lower my faith to theirs. Like almost each time I have to see this person, constantly speaking against what I am believing in. That is so wrong. Anyways, James 1, 6 through 7. And you may have people that are that way as well. And you have to get to the point where you don't listen to people who are speaking like that. Because you have no idea. There are so many people that say that they love God. There are so many people that say that God can do anything. But when it comes down to their lives, they have little faith. How can you say God can do anything, but your trust in God is so small? My Lord. <laughs> it makes no sense. You are saying one thing, and then <laughs> later you are speaking against in so many words, what you just said. Faith. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. So what does that mean? First of all, this is a covenant promise from God. To get God's promises, you have to be a servant of God. The way that you become a servant of God is not just by going to church every Sunday and Wednesday. You are just a churchgoer, not a servant of God. You become a servant of God when you begin to follow his rules and regulations. So you get God's promises when you begin to serve him, when you begin to follow his rules and regulations. Yes, but let him ask in faith. So when you are asking for whatever, as long as it is not sinful, what this is saying, continue to believe in what you are praying about. Stop placing a time limit on God. 
Faith is now. Faith does not have a time limit. There is no time in faith. But people give their faith or their trust in God a time limit. And when God does not accomplish what they expect within that time limit, then they lose faith in God or they lower their faith. When you are asking God for something, don't waver. Maybe God is going to answer it or if it is in God's plan, no. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. This is not saying if it is in God's plan. Of course, I am not saying that you should ask God to rob a bank or to kill a person and stuff like that. No, this is saying, but let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that withereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. You are unstable. I know that there is a God. I know God can do the impossible, but hey, I may go to jail one day or I may go to jail for this issue here and I am in fear. So I know I should trust in God, but they say that I may get 20 years. So let me just take the easy route out so I don't have to blah, blah, blah. That is not faith. You are praying to God that you want God to drop all the charges. But you are saying to yourself, well, um, you know, the DA have these, this evidence here and that evidence there. And I know that God can do anything, but, you know, what are the chances of God really doing the impossible for this here while they have all this evidence against me? Are you praying in faith? Are you showing God's faith? Are you showing faith in God when you are wavering? You are, you just ask God to drop the charges. So when the DA or the lawyer shows you what they have on you, then you begin to <coughs> waver. Well, you know, I was praying to God to drop them, but you know, they are showing me that they have this evidence against me. So let me change my mind. Let me change my mind and take the easy route out. Because in one breath, I am saying that I trust in God, but in another breath, I am showing you how much I don't trust in God. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. Don't waver. So in this case here, hey, whatever evidence you have against me, whatever. I know that what I am believing in has already happened because faith is now. Faith is not in six months. Faith is not whatever. Faith is now. So even through, I am going through this case, I am believing that it has happened now. That is faith. People choose to not understand faith because faith makes no earthly sense. You can't make sense, earthly sense out of faith. So people choose to not have faith. My Lord, when you are praying for something, for instance, 
I am praying for a brand new car. And a person may say, well, you know, Kevin, you would have to pay for insurance and the gas and blah, blah, blah. I don't care. I am not planning on what I have to do if God gives me that car. I am asking for it, believing that God is going to take care of everything else. And some people may say, well, Kevin, you know, I don't think God is going to give me that new car. Hey, <laughs> if you think that, I don't really care. If you don't want to have faith in God, just do you. But there are people who actually do have faith in God. There are people that want to learn how to have faith in God. So this is why I am speaking it right now. Speaking about faith now. I am believing for a brand new car. I don't... Even with everything that a person may say that I may have to worry about, I am not caring about that because I know that God is going to take care of it and I don't have to worry. That is faith. God, I am going through this trouble now or I want this to happen and there is no way that I can do it on my own so I am taking it and I am giving my troubles to you that is faith for let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord so if you are wavering going back and forth in your faith this is saying you are not going to get what you are praying for. I believe God is going to heal me. But, you know, this part is hurting so much. That part is hurting so much. I don't think God can or will do it because after all these years, I have been hurting so much. You just said that you believe that God is going to heal you, but in the other breath, you are speaking against what you are praying for. It makes no sense. When you are praying for something, stop speaking against it. Don't you know that our words have power? If bad things are happening to me, why shall I speak negatively about myself when I know that words have power? Why shall I help demons attack me with my own words? My Lord. Let me stop here. God bless.